Hello everyone, welcome to the Reds Take. It's that time of the week where I go over my headliners and takeaways um, for each NFL game from week three. So let's get started with the Thursday night football game between the Giants and 49ers. My headliner is 49ers sitting purdy. After a slow start, the 49ers offense got rolling and while they were you know, facing the Giants team with some key players that like Saquon Barkley, uh, they just looked so good on both sides of the ball. Um, everything was efficient, and um, th just the offense they run is just so pretty and stuff like that. Um, and it's very easy to imagine them getting the one seed. Um, and then see, as long as Purdy continues to play what, within the offense and everyone, you know, those are 111. Um, Colts versus Ravens. Colts brought some Minshew magic to Baltimore. It's been a while since fans saw some Gardner Minshew magic, and he showed up and and the, made the clutch plays that gave the Colts the win. Um, the defense also played really well, um, and that definitely helped. But if it wasn't for Lamar's running abilities, then I don't think the Ravens even scored double digits in this game. Um, again, the Colts, you know, they won't be a bottom four team like I thought, I and mean, maybe more bottom ten, but, but they're definitely going to be competitive and in a, in a tough out for teams with the way they're playing. Titans versus Browns. The Titanic is sinking. The Titans' offense line is not good at all. Uh, but Tannehill just does not have it anymore. He's he's not that game manager who can help you win games anymore, in my opinion. Um, and just it it is. A, I know he looks good against Chargers, but Chargers don't get defense. But um, in my opinion, I, I feel like you got to go the Malik Willis route. Willis route. See what you have there. And if it's not much, then you even go the um, the Will Levis route and see. You know. Um, if you got anything there, you just have to see what you have for the future um, because it's a deep quarterback class. So you want to know if you're going to go with one of them or just move all of them off quickly and get a new one. Um, but just you need to stop with the Tannehill charade. It's over. Um, Broncos versus Dolphins. Broncos get beat by the ball boy. <laughs> That's right. Mike Bedell used to be the ball boy for Denver back in the day. And the fact that Denver, you know, when it came for time for coaching interviews, didn't even interview him is crazy to think about, especially as they hired Hackett, you know. But um, the Dolphins, yeah, they're, I mean, I knew they were going to be good, but I didn't know they were going to be this good. Now, of course, we still have to wait to see, um, not if, but probably when Tua is going to get hurt, because he will disappoint. If he does, how long will it be for and stuff like that. But again, as long as everyone's healthy, then they're going to be super tough to beat. Um, Patriots versus Jets. Patriots are still streaking. The long winning streak for 15 games in a row is still live for the Patriots thanks to a close but failed Hail Mary attempt. Um, the offense still has its issues, um, but they did just enough to get it done while the defense did his job. As for the Jets, they are going to struggle this year. It's crystal clear now. Zach Wilson was ineffective once again, although credit to him, he didn't throw a pick this time. Uh, but the problem is he played too scared and it's while you don't throw a pick, you, you know, you got to at least do something, you know, take some chances. But, um, but yeah, the offensive line has its issues, and the, and the offensive play calling has just been super horrendous um, with Hackett. And it looks like, even with Rodgers, it looks like this would have been definitely a struggle for the Jets. Um, Bills versus Commanders. I don't hear any howling. I couldn't believe some analysts were saying, oh, Washington's for real. They're, you know, they can make, even sneak into the playoffs and Sam Howell's the real deal. It's like, stop that, you know. That's why I wanted to see how face a top five, ten, definitely top ten team before I, I go that far. Sure enough, he, he throws for four picks. Um, the commanders definitely may win some games and maybe a little bit better than, again, I originally thought they were going to be, but uh, mainly because of their defense. But the commanders got their first big clue that how, eh, there's a, there's a ceiling with him, maybe not be the franchise guy. Falcons versus Lions. Motor sitting, still motoring. Lions had a letdown last week um, against Seattle, no doubt about that at home. But the Lions uh, downed some guys, did a good job to bounce back and get a big win um, and show that they can handle adversity and that they'll still be contenders to win a division. Saints versus Packers. Love is the key. As I said before the season started, every game will come down to Jordan Love since the roster's pretty good for the Packers. Um, well, in this game, he looked bad for three quarters, but then Love engineered the combat uh, from down 17 nothing. So, in fairness, credit goes to him for that regard, not taking anything away there. 
But if you're being honest on the other side of things, if Derek Carr does not get injured in the third quarter, then the Saints win that game. They would have scored at least a field goal, if not another touchdown or something. And therefore, the Packers would have won. Because when James Winston came in, the Saints offense basically did nothing. Like So, that you have to take that in, in, in fact, the factor there. But yeah, Packers, you know, good job. You know, good job for Joe Love making the comeback. And now they got a Thursday night game between Detroit. That'll be interesting. And if you can win that one, then you're off and running. Um, Texans versus Jags. Jags gag a perfect opportunity. This was supposed to be a get-right game for the Jags so they can have a winning record going to London and, and show that, hey, we're fine and figure things out. But the defense was once again a no-show, and the offense is still struggling so far, which that's been the bigger surprise. Um, I don't know what's going on, but the Jags need to figure things out. I doubt they can win eight of the last nine games or something like they did last year again. I doubt that's going to happen. Chargers versus Vikings. L.A. gets a bolt of lightning. If the Chargers would have given up a last-second lead to fall 0-3, especially since it was Sprint Staley's fault for going on 4th and 1 at their own 24-yard line, their season would have basically been over. Now, with the win, they can still be at least alive. Kind of like Cincinnati, at least they'll be alive. And if the defense could just make... They won't be good, but if they can just make the clutch plays at the right times, then that's how they're going to win games. Um, and unfortunately, the Chargers losing Mike Williams with your doesn't hurt. Um, hurts a lot, but luckily they have a lot of receiver depth. Uh, Panthers versus Seahawks. Seahawks are soaring. After a bad game one, Seattle's offense has looked much better over the past two weeks. And it looks like they're starting to um, look like a playoff team like they did last year. Now, the defense still has those question marks, uh, but they're supposed to get Jamal Adams back, and I feel like that can get fixed over time. Um, it's sad for the Panthers that, you know, they chose Bryce Young because with the way they're looking, it looks like they could have been in contention for the Caleb Williams sweepstakes, you know, but instead they got Bryce Young. And it's crazy that Andy Dalton looked better than, you know, has looked the past two games, but that's just NFL for you. Um, Cowboys versus Cardinals. Cowboys lost in the desert. Despite the Cowboys being good, every single year they have one of those games where it makes you scratch your head and go, what's going on here? Well, two things stood out in this game. One is their red zone struggles. They had red zone struggles against the Jets, and it showed again against Arizona. Now that's an issue. You cannot be settling for field goals in the red zone. You have to be scoring touchdowns once you get down there. Especially when it's like, you know, a first and goal or second, like once you're at that point, you got to score the touchdowns. Um, and that, they didn't do that. So that's something you have to fix if they want to feel good about the playoffs and all that. And then the second thing is, once again, the Cowboys are committing a lot of penalties on, under Mike McCarthy. It's stupid. Like they committed 13 penalties over 100 yards. It's like, you're not going to win many games that way. Um, you got to figure out that out if you're at McCarthy to be more disciplined. Um, obviously, since it hasn't been figured out by now, I don't think it will. But they just continue, they got to try to find something because now with, you know, injuries, like with Trayvon Diggs being out and some offensive line, it's like with when you have injuries going on, you can't be making mistakes to put you back behind the chains or to give another team a first down type of thing. you got to be playing clean football. Bears versus Chiefs. Chiefs are going to shake it off, shake it off. Yeah, with Taylor Swift at the game, the Chiefs put on a show, albeit against what's clear now a bad Bears team. Um, it was 41-0 for the, the Chiefs pulled their stars and Chicago scored 10 points. But um, Fields, didn't, Fields didn't throw for over 100 yards. <laughs> and the Bears are now officially in the Caleb Williams sweepstakes. Although with this franchise being inept offense and the mess it is, I'm not sure if, how much of a difference he can make or definitely if he would want to go there or not. Um, Steelers versus Raiders. Steelers party in Vegas. After taking a lot of criticism the past two weeks, the offense looked finally at minimum competent this week. It definitely helped that Vegas had multiple turnovers and they have a questionable secondary. Um, and they had a coach make questionable coach decisions, but the Steelers took advantage. Now we'll see if the Steelers can remain competent once again next week going forward. Uh, Monday, you have the two games. You get the Eagles versus the Bucks. Baker and the Bucks are fakers. Against real competition, the Bucks showed that the undefeated start was more of who they play than their talent. Bucks can't run the ball at all, so they have to rely on Baker, which Baker needs a good run game and needs a defense to hold teams to low amount of points in order to succeed. Um, now, I was wrong about Tampa as far as being the bottom three team. I was clear on they can be in more bottom ten. Kind of like with the Coles, you know, hey, you're not bottom three, maybe more bottom ten, but nevertheless, you're not a real contender. Um, Rams versus Bengals. Chase is on the case. 
Joe Burrow not 100% clear and makes the offense limited, but Jamar Chase was the player that stepped up on offense and saved the day with 12 receptions for 141 yards. If it wasn't for him, the offense may not have hit double digits. Also, the Cincy defense finally stepped up and played like they did towards the end of last year, forcing turnovers, come with big sacks. As long as Burrow is not 100%, the Bengals will have to win games ugly, which is not easy, but at least they have some life now. As long as the defense continues to play well like they did last night and receivers can step up and make big plays. Um, so thank you very much for listening to my podcast today. Please subscribe to my channel, Talk About Me. Um, later on in the week, I'll go over uh, my college football week five predictions and my NFL week four predictions. Also, speaking of college football, I updated my college football bowl projection, projections um, after week four. You can look at it on my LinkedIn page down to Rhett. Um, thank you very much, and you know, all have a wonderful day.